the uh, meeting of the tax, San Ange City of San Angelo Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Board to order. Um, and we do have a quorum present. So the first item on the agenda is for public comment on anything that is not on the agenda. Uh, if there is something on the agenda that you want to speak to, please wait your turn until that. You, we will take public comment on all items on the, reg on the agenda. But if you have something that you wish to address the board on that is not on the agenda, this is your opportunity to come forward and, and speak with the board now. I don't well, see anyone jump else. jump in and okay. just announce, I think most of you have met Hannah, but Hannah Morell is our new Yes, Mr. Leader. James is leaving us. <laughs> That's, I should make that that's announcement. That's true I too. <laughs> I was actually going to make that at the end in the director's report, but yes, this will be my last tears meeting. Uh, but it is Hannah's first tears meeting, and so she's taking over for Brian uh, Fox, who I think already left the room. But um, she'll be the one coordinating the the meetings as well as the incentive grant programs and and all of that. So you'll be seeing uh, more of her uh, in the future. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you. We'll try not to scare you too much. All right. Any other items for public comment? All right, we'll go to consideration of the minutes from the August 22nd, 2023 Tears Board meeting. You should have received a copy of those through the email. And if anyone needs a chance to look over those again, uh, please do so now. Are there any, are there, and I'll ask for, from the board members if there are any corrections uh, to any of the minutes. I did not see anything myself. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. So moved. All right, I figure Stephen would jump in there. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, thank you, Trey. Uh, motion to second has been made. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes, uh, say, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes are approved. All right. Now it's time for the financial report. Thank you. I'm John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. Uh, you've uh, most of you have seen this before. I know we've got a couple of new members, but this is our uh, each month presenting a financial report of the status of the tiers funds. Um, this is as of September 30th, which is our, the end of our fiscal year. The city's fiscal year starts on October 1st, so this is basically the year-end um, financial report. Uh, we started the year with about 589000 uh, in the fund. You can see there the projected revenues. Uh, those do get adjusted, and so once final numbers for the year come in, that could go up or down uh, a little bit. Um, you can see the expenditures we have. The, uh, the big one is the private incentive funds committed. Those are funds for incentive projects that have applied and have been approved by you all and the city council. Uh, but have not yet been spent. So once a project is approved, that money gets set aside. And of course, when the project is completed, then we pay out of that uh, for, those, uh, for those projects. Uh, similarly, the Chadburn Street, uh, as you may know, the a certain portion of the tiers funds were set aside for the Chadburn Street improvements. Um, and so those are the amount of funds that were set aside are still available for that. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, minor things there, the streetscape maintenance. In the past, the Tears Board had paid to plant uh, trees, shrubs along the North Chadburn, uh, basically from the loop up to about, I think, 19th Street, um, maybe a little farther north than that. And so each year we set aside a little bit for maintenance of that landscaping. A uh, landscaping company comes out, trims the trees, the bushes, um, runs the irrigation system, and, and all of that kind of thing. Uh, and then operating expenses are just a small amount for the things in the office that we do, mail outs, um, newspaper notices if those are necessary, and all, all of those kinds of things. Uh, and then the, usually the number at the bottom of the screen has a, uh, has a number here, uh, but as you may recall, uh, with the last set of South projects, uh, you guys authorized and the council approved 
spending actually every last penny. Uh, and we'll talk about more in a minute how you actually authorized a little bit more than that. Um, council uh, disagreed with that, but we're going to talk about that on another item in a few minutes. Question. In your property tax revenues for each year, and you have a certain amount of money that's un, that you that's committed but not spent, unspent, unencumbered. Is that why isn't that invested? Is that invested? Well, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. Uh, one of the things I was going to mention in the financial report is you all had asked for some answers to those kinds of questions. Um, Finance Director uh, Tina Dierschke couldn't be here today, but she's planning to be at your next meeting to have some more information on that accrued interest, how it's invested, and, and all of that. On your property tax revenues for the year, do they come proportionally on a monthly basis, quarterly, or what? My understanding is they come in as they come in to... So they uh, come as, in proportionally as they... Yeah. Yes, but wise or whatever. But there, yeah, there is a certain amount coming in. So I'm, my question there is: Is that invested? My understanding is yes, but that may be a question to hold for Tina. And the there next should meeting. be a figure for interest income. Well, and so that's also a good question. That number is zero there because, as you may recall, um, they prior to your questioning of that, they were uh, treating investment income differently for the tears fund. They went back, and as of October 1st of last year, um, they redid how they accrue those interest funds. So there is actually accrued interest in the South. That This column here reflects what was budgeted versus what the actual. So I, I've actually got a slide in a minute that will show what the actual for the year was. Okay. You've got a figure for that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I would just, if, if this is a template, uh, uh, Sorth is not, it should be South. Just there's a spelling, oh, yeah, <laughs> spelling can, error on there for in the future. We can correct that. Yep. All right. And this is the North, which does have an R. Which <laughs> does have an R. Yes. And so I won't go through uh, every one of these. It's basically the same, um, the same items. Obviously, the, the North has significantly more funds uh, starting the year with a little over two and a half million. Uh, ending the year with just under one and a half million. Uh, there are a couple of additional items. There's this public improvement set aside. I don't know if I like the zoom thing or not, but it's about 103,000. A few years ago, the board decided to set aside a percentage of the North funds for public improvement projects, whether that be a street project, street lighting, uh, those kinds of things. A, a, portion of those funds that were set aside years ago just have not been spent. And so that 103000 is just sitting there waiting for uh, some type of public improvement project to move forward, uh, and then that can be used for that. Um, why, if, it's, if we don't have a project, why don't you put it back in the total amount available for funding, and when that project comes, we can vote to fund it or not fund it? Well, the short answer is you all in the council specifically set aside that only for a public project, like a street project. Uh, and so if we put it in the available for funding, that could theoretically go to a, uh, a business project. Right. Um, now, I suppose that could be a future item for discussion is to basically zero that out and move it back in. But as of right now, it is committed to a public project. $104,000 conceivably could be used for 4th Street. It could also be it used could. for the Chadburn Street or the streetscape maintenance, couldn't it not? Um, I don't think it could be used for maintenance because that's a different category of expenditure versus a public improvement. I'm just saying but it could be allotted toward the Chadburn Street. It could go towards the Chadburn. To free up the, the tricky part with that is, um, based on the council's vote, it was... A, per, a specific percentage of each year's revenue. Um, I think it was 50% in the north. Um, and so uh, it was easier accounting wise to keep it in this separate category. Okay. Yes. Because uh, I'm new to this process, so I want to make sure I understand. So, can you just one more time explain to me the difference between the streetscape maintenance and the public improvement set aside. I, I want to make sure I understand the difference between the two. 
So the streetscape maintenance is specifically designated for streetscape, meaning uh, the trees, streetlights, shrubs, irrigation for those trees, and et cetera. Um, the public improvements would be for an actual project to go out and make an improvement, build a sidewalk, um, do something different with the street, put in street lights. So uh, an actual new project that's being funded with this. And, and who would bring that to the, the board? Well, the board could initiate something or it, often it's, it's typically those projects are brought by staff. Uh, not too long ago, uh, our public works staff brought forward a North Chadburn project. Uh, this board decided that you weren't ready to move that forward, uh, but that was the most recent one that was brought before you. We also looked uh, a couple of years ago at a sidewalk project on, uh, I think it was on MLK and maybe a separate one on Chadburn, and, but that was a similar public improvement, but it was brought by staff. Okay, last question. So is this taken in consideration if there is um, a community project that comes forth to the board and some of this that they need to have done, perhaps sidewalks or so forth, as you mentioned, is a part of their project. Is that considered in terms of the amount that they are given or the amount less uh, if their project also needs those things in their, in their project? Is that considered? I, I don't know why it couldn't be. In the past, we've treated, if, if it's improvements for a specific private project, uh -huh. Even those improvements in the street right of way are treated as part of that private project. So even a sidewalk in the street right of way, even though it's a public improvement, has been tr treated as part of that private project. So, so the person who's requesting the funds, they're paying for this, even though there 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 are funds set aside in the budget for this. Am I clear on that? Yes, and and the way we've treated that is those public improvements are for a publicly a public initiated project so if we were uh, not building a sidewalk in front of one business but if we were going out and building like two or three blocks of sidewalk that would be the public improvement and that would not be against the the person or group that's bringing that project forward that that wouldn't come from what we're giving them if approved correct if it was a separate project initiated by the city yeah it would not count against anything that they okay. did that's right. right thank you now I'm going to skip a slide. This is actually with the next item, but this answers your question, Mr. Brown. These are the actual accrued interest for the fiscal year 22-23. So the north interest was about 69,000 and then just over 9,000 in the south. You can ignore that below because that's we'll talk about that in a second on the next item. Where is that 9,000 in this figure? It's not on here. It's, it's not, not on there. here. This is end of year and so yeah. It's an interest. That's correct. And then the the item five that we'll talk about in a minute is and authorizing seventy thousand in the north. It's not shown. That's correct. correct. Well, actually, let me go back. Um, it, it's partially. Re that's the sixteen thousand is what we projected. It's actually sixty nine thousand. That's so, right. Yeah. That. Yep. So it's not sixteen. It's sixty nine. Plus 16 or just 69? No, the 16 is part of the... We, at the first of the year, we thought we would get 16000 in interest. We ended up getting 69000 Because that was carried over from a previous time? No, that, that was all interest earned in the current year. At the end of the year, that interest income gets just folded into... So, so as of October 1st, 000? it will be in that new balance number, beginning balance. So is that 53000 more than or fifty? What is it, yeah, that you're talking about into the 16? Is that? Yes. Okay. So Let we me have... make, make sure that the, the 16,000 in the north, is that projected for the 23, 24 year? No, this, that number is what was projected for the 22, 23 year. And, next it's month, actually going to be 69,000. Yes. Something. And so next month you'll see something similar, but it will be for the new budget year. So. Well, these figures are not accurate, is what you're saying. Well, they're, they're accurate as of September 30th. Uh, we get numbers as of the end of the month, the but previous month. Effective, they're not accurate as of October 1. That's what I'm asking. Correct. Okay. Yeah, there's the changes. Are there any other questions on the financial report? All right. Um, I think 
we do not need a motion that, to approve right. the financial report, so we can move on to the next item on the agenda, which is consideration and possible action on recommending additional funding from the previous year's accrued interest to the recently approved projects at 213 North Chabern and 5 West Concho. Could you ref refresh my memory on what the projects were at 213 North Chabern and 5 West Concho? Um, 5 West Concho is adjacent to the Angry Cactus. Um, okay. And I, honestly, off the top of my head, I don't remember what 213 uh, North Chabern was. Um, trying to think it may be that I think it's the valley vending right here just a couple okay. blocks uh, away so you, you may recall that you all recommended approval of these projects and also recommended that half of the accrued interest that was available at that time be split among those two projects to give them each a little bit of additional funding uh, that recommendation went to City Council and they chose not to follow that accrued interest recommendation and instead wanted to continue to basically keep that accrued interest until the end of the year, and at that point it would be swept into the available funding category. Um, so now, if, because we're after October 1st, that money is now available. Uh, you all at the last meeting had asked us to bring that this back for consideration, um, and let me go to those numbers, um, basically to take that $9,145 available of accrued interest in the South and split it between equally between those two projects, uh, 213 North Chabern and 5 West Concho. Um, and so, again, I think this is at y'all's request to bring this back. It would give about 4500 to each of those projects. Uh, it will also require uh, amending those existing agreements because both of those projects uh, their owners have already signed those agreements and begun moving forward. Um, I mean, that's that's not a problem, but it will take some extra paperwork on our end as well as their end uh, to make that happen. Uh, but uh, so this is basically for your consideration okay. to move on to a recommendation to council to add forty five hundred dollars to each of those projects. Before we get into board discussion, is there is there anything else on this one? Nope. Is there any public comment on this? Let me just ask for any public comment on item five. I don't see anyone approaching to comment. Um, board, what's y'all's pleasure? I know I remember having the discussion and I remember the recommendation being made. Um, I, I don't have any real dog in this one. Good way. I don't, I don't, it doesn't really, matter to me what we do if we, if we want to it's whatever y'all want to do Have you talked to these two applicants to see if this is even help we have not at the time they indicated that anything would help um, we would want to go back to them they may say it's not worth the extra hassle of going through yeah. new agreements and signing new documents and everything but uh, you could just not do this or you could approve it and if they don't think it's worth it then it will just drop away and, and the mon money will come back. This would have to go to the city council? This would have to would go, have to, go to the city council. Have to approve it. Yeah, I mean I still think, I mean, I think we need to reach out to them and tell them there's some, there could be a potential of $4,572.50 but they need to reapply and then let's look at the applicant applications when they come in. Because when, well, when you say well, you have to reapply and everything? No, oh, they, they wouldn't have to reapply. Reapply. Would just, It would just be new agreements. We've approved them. There was just not enough funding okay. uh, to to fund their full the full request for them in the South. And as I recall, we said we passed a recommendation that whatever accrued interest we had could go to those two projects to try to give them as much assistance I, as possible. Right. And the City Council accepted the projects but rejected um, the recommendation as far as the interest. Mr. Chairman, I, re I make a motion we approve the 4572.50 for each project and forward it rec our recommendation to City Council. All right. There's a motion been made to approve it. Any I, yeah, well, I mean, I just, I think most of this board here was not even on the board when either one of those came up. Um, I'd just like a rehash of what those projects are and, and budgets, amounts, and all that because I think Probably you, John Mark, and uh, Stephen are the only two ex board members on the board. <laughs> Probably. Hey, yes, ma'am. Point of order. We have a motion on the floor. Are we going to carry, get, get the second so we can oh, carry we're, it? We're waiting for us if there is a okay. second right, for the motion. Okay. Comment on it. Is there a second to the motion to approve? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Holmes. All right. 
Uh, with that, we'll open it up for any public comment on this item, which I don't think there was any. And if seeing no public comment, is there any discussion among the board? Questions? Uh, like I said, my just, I just, like I said, I, I don't recall what these program, what, what each one of these projects were, nor I saw it. And I'm, I know I was on here probably next behind you guys, and so uh, I just, it's hard for me to prove this without seeing what what these projects were at the time. Yeah, the only thing I can say in re in regard to that, I mean, I'm fine with if we want to approve it. Uh, we don't have, there's, we're missing a lot of members today, but. I would be interested to know, is it even worth it to the, to the, would the project grantees, would they even be interested in, in doing the paperwork or whatever we need to do to do it, or are they just fine and would rather just go on? Yeah, I mean, we could before, definitely reach out to them if you wanted to table this and could probably bring back more information. Um, well, the motion's on the floor yeah. um, to, to approve it, so whatever, whatever y'all want to This do. board voted to approve it. Some of us were here, some of us not. I mean, they were valid projects. And if I recall, and my memory is correct, mm -hmm. I think we got a unanimous vote on both projects. Yeah, I'm sure That's we right. did. When well, you did and say so there wasn't enough funding for both projects it, at it's that up time. To yeah. the, it's up to the applicant. If they want the $4,500, yeah. $4, it's available they to can them. sign an amendment. If not, just go. Yes, Ms. Yeah. Spears. Uh, I was not a part of this board at the time, but if this board has approved it, then I believe that we should move forward with it now that we know the amount that's available. I think to come back now and change the amount or to not even go after it, you know, is a conflict in terms of what this board decided. Sure. And the fact that there was a delay while we determine end of year funds available, I think we should move forward with okay. giving them that amount since we now know what it is. Any other questions or comments? All right, uh, then we'll call for the vote. Uh, all in favor of approving the recommendation to send this back to City Council with splitting the interest amount between the two projects at 213 North Chabner and 5 West Concho, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. John, what I would do is call each one, and if they want the money, fine. If it doesn't, it goes back in the pot. Yep, we can do that. And we'll, yep. Um, yep. Uh, I think staff will probably try to reach out before the city council meeting so that we know that before it goes to council. Yeah. Next item is item number six, discussion and possible action on amending the tiers incentive policy to limit the amount of funding that can go towards projects for nonprofit organizations. Um, I'm going to give a little introduction on this and kind of lay out my thoughts on it. Um, they're just my thoughts. They're not belong to anyone else's. Um, this is was a comment that was made, as as many of you know, or maybe may don't know, after we approved our the nonprofit for uh, the Galilee uh, Baptist Church. Gethsemane. Excuse me, Gethsemane. I'm correct. You're, you're correct. Geez, I keep getting confused. Gethsemane Baptist Church. Um, I did appear to the council just to explain, you know, my view on things. Uh, the council did not, they, a majority voted in favor of that, approving that project. A minority uh, uh, disapproved, uh, but it was sufficient to kill it because it wasn't a super majority vote. Uh, during that, one of the council members' objections that was raised was the fear that all these a lot of these nonprofits on MLK were now going to come start asking for money. And then he threw out in a comment the idea about he would only approve of that policy uh, if, if there was some sort of monetary limit put to what uh, nonprofits could get. Um, I, 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 discussed that, I discussed that with him, and I said, well, that's a matter of policy. Uh, what we're trying to deal with is the application that was made and whether it meets the criteria that were currently in effect. Um, so, Mike, we have gone down this road several times about this policy and various other policies uh, that we've made recommendations on to city council that have been rejected. Uh, my personal opinion is I'm not interested in having any more 
wasting this board's time of having policy discussions about what the policy should be. Uh, I think that's up to the city council. Uh, I think that they can make the decision to decide what policy they want to have regarding nonprofits. Uh, but I just don't see any anything productive coming out of our sitting here and debating what the policy should be for nonprofits because we have no idea whether the council is going to listen to any recommendations that we make or not. Uh, therefore, we think that what the council has done, or I think, let me say we, I think what the council did with its last vote is essentially nullify the policy that says nonprofits are eligible to apply. Uh, because without a supermajority, and if the supermajority is never going to vote for it, not because of the merits of the application, but because they disagree with the policy, then it, it, the de facto policy is that nonprofits are not eligible. Uh, therefore, I don't see any reason why we should engage any further until the City Council gives us direction about what they want us to do about nonprofits in the North Tier Zone. That's my opinion, uh, but I'm happy to I'll open it up for any further discussion. Yeah, I have a question to you. Who was the council member who opposed the member? Uh, there, there were two votes against it. One was the mayor and one was Tom Thompson. I have, I have additional, I, I don't disagree with you. In fact, I do totally agree with you. But I'm against putting limits on nonprofits for this reason. Let's assume for a minute that somebody like, I'll, I'll pick one out there, San Angel Health Foundation comes in here and they want to build a brand new building downtown. They give millions of dollars to worthy causes in this community and are a valuable asset. And why would we put a limit on somebody, whether it be a church or health foundation or Christmas in old Fort Concho or whatever we want to pick out that's a nonprofit? that has a community advantage to this town. Uh, I'm, I agree with you, John. I I agree. The city council, they want to put limits on it. They can give I, it. I, I agree on the merits. I agree with you on the merits on that. I would oppose such a policy if it were come to a vote. I guess my issue is, do we want to even discuss it? Mr. Chairman, um, you all know I've been out of town for months, sure. but I did happen to listen and watch mm -hmm. that city council meeting, and, and so I saw exactly what happened through that dynamic uh, on that particular meeting. And if there is a way, I'm new to this particular board, but I don't even think we need to spend our time okay. uh, discussing it because the city is going to, the council is going to decide what they want to do about it. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but what has become very clear to me as I've watched this over the last several months um, is that there is a need on the part of some council people to make a distinction between a nonprofit and a church. And that is disturbing to me because that is what the IRS code has established, that they can have that status. Mm -hmm. um, and we are not the ones to make that change. Uh, and so I think with the language currently saying nonprofits can apply, then that's what happens. The situation that it puts us in is that we approve and then they don't necessarily get approved at the council. That's just kind of one of those difficult mm -hmm. situations. So I think the policy needs to be made, but I don't think we're the body to really get into discussion because I think we're clear that uh, we all agree nonprofit is nonprofit, whatever they happen to do. And your example is a very good one, uh, Steve, but um, I don't think we need to waste our time. So I'll be happy to put a motion forward that we not discuss it uh, any further if that's needed at this time. I think all we would have to do is just take no action, but unless someone disagrees. Can we, can we ask City Council to refine the policy to it gives us better direction? Well, I don't know if we have that prerogative or not. I mean, I guess you can always ask. I, I, you know, part of, part of me also disagrees with, and I'm not, I'm not griping at staff. I want to say that clearly. I know that staff was told by some council member members, I have no idea who, I to do. put this on the agenda. Um, and I disagree with the fact that one council member or two can say, put something on the agenda for a board and that happens. I fully understand that the council is over this board and over all other boards. 
I think if the city council gave direction to the city manager in a public meeting saying we want this discussed at a planning commission meeting or a or at the tiers board, I, I have no problem with that. Uh, but an individual or one or two city council members outside of a council meeting requesting that that be done, I think that's improper. I think that's not the way we should be operating in an open and public manner. Uh, so uh, that's that's just, again, these, you're just hearing the gospel according to John Mark Hope this morning. Uh, but anyway, if, if there is, and I don't want to, I don't want to, if someone really, if someone on the board wants to have the discussion on the merits of this suggestion, I'm, I'm happy to have that. I'm just stating this is my, my opinion right now, so. I, I think we ought to leave it alone. I mean, let's leave the ball in their court. Let's don't kick a horse when, when he's dead. Uh, yep. Well, until, until we get direction from them, we're gonna have to keep hearing the nonprofit applications and going right. through the many steps that these, these people went through well, to get there multiple times. And like you said, it, it's a waste whenever we've done this multiple times well, and they have a different direction what they've given us direction on. To me, this feels like creating Indians. policy by negotiation. And I just don't think, I don't think that we should have to do that. We should not have to negotiate with the city council about what, under what circumstances a nonprofit can get funds. And I don't, and I do not think that this particular item was anything that was requested by a majority of the city council. Yeah, I, I heard the comment during the city council meeting as I was watching. Um, and I know there was some discussion about that. And I just think that we're beating the dead horse and we, they need to make the decision on the policy and then we will be able to know what to do going forward. Now, when they come back with the policy maybe that we disagree with, we can have a comment about it. But it's not anything that we can do once that policy is set. But this whole process uh, with nonprofits, I go back to what I said earlier, and it's not so much that it's a nonprofit, it's a church. There's some issue with some of the people on the council, it seems, um, that churches uh, who are, you know, those, those are nonprofits. And so we don't make up that code. Again, the federal government decides that. And so I think there's just an issue of a church versus a, another type of business that is also a 501 c three six four what have you, nonprofit. And so let's put the ball back or leave it in their court uh, and we'll go from that point. Well, until we have a policy that has criteria that the city council will weigh, because my biggest objection is not that you, reasonable people can have a difference of opinion about mm -hmm. whether a nonprofit project is, has a substantial economic impact under the current policy. We can have that debate, mm -hmm. but what we can't do is have that debate and then have the decision made based upon some other criteria, mm -hmm. such as I don't think nonprofits deserve getting any assistance. So that's, again, it's, does anyone on the, on the board want to have this discussion about whether what recommendation, if any, we should make regarding this? Anyway, okay. Seeing no one's interested, we'll just take no action on that, uh, Mr. James. And I, I know there are some people here that wanted to speak to that topic. Does any, anyone want to speak to it at all? Knowing what we're <laughs> knowing that we're not going to do anything. Good Evelyn Smith. Each and every one of you. Um, Evelyn Smith, SMD5. Um, I understand what each, each one of you said. I agree with what each and every one of you said. But I'm back to the point where we were one vote away from getting this approved. Mm -hmm. And that suggestion was made that if there was a cap on the cap that we already have, <laughs> that there was a cap for a nonprofit. Well, we did consider that because, you know, everything else we've done has, has failed. Mm -hmm. And so now we're back to the policy where the nonprofit can put in an application, but what good is put in the application when it gets to the city council it's going to get shot down again. So I understand what you're talking about. They need to make another policy. They need to do something else, put it back in the city council's lap. But it appears to me the city council don't want nonprofit on here at all. So where, where are we at 
to help the nonprofits now, just leaving it alone and letting city council have the last word because their last word is what they want is somebody who's, who pay taxes. That's their whole concern is that the nonprofit do not pay taxes and don't put anything back into the pot. Then they come up with this idea, okay, if you make a significant impact, we'll consider it. Well, we made a significant impact. They still didn't consider it. But I, I just believe that's their whole thing. And it probably, unless something really precision happened, their whole thing is nothing's going to change their idea because nonprofit doesn't put back any, doesn't pay any taxes. So we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard and the place. Only, the only thing I can say is for your nonprofit, for Gethsemane, for any other nonprofit, is the policy is still in there. You're welcome to submit an application with the understanding that it takes a supermajority of this board and a supermajority of the city council, and the city council has not approved one. So, Chairman, I'm going to ask that on next month's agenda that we put an item on the agenda for reconsideration and vote by this board to resubmit the Gethsemane Baptist Church to the city council for reconsideration. Put it back on their lap. I'm going to see them turn it down again one more time. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to address, address the, certainly. The, the comment. And, and I understand exactly where you're coming from. But the ultimate decision body, making body, is the council. And as you know, this board has approved the application and wishes for it to move forward and be approved by the council. But as long as the council keeps coming up with things that can prevent them from voting in agreement with what this body uh, agrees to do, we're going to continue to have that, that issue, right? And so until uh, that is resolved, either changed, modified, however you want to say it, no matter what we approve, it appears to me, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's nonprofit, it's not going to necessarily get approved. And in my personal opinion is if it's a church, then it's definitely not going to get past the council. So I think what we're saying, uh, Madam Evelyn, is that what we want to do is to put the ball back into the council's court and let them define that. Because every time a nonprofit comes in, if we approve it, the risk is that it's not going to get approved by the council. And that's just craziness to me to continue to allow people to go through all the hard work and putting that application together and doing the research and all of that that they have to do, we approve it, and then it gets to council and it's not approved. So I think what we're all saying is let the council define that and, and then we can move forward because we are in agreement, this body is in agreement, and they have approved your application. Well, Spears, okay. I'm, that's the reason I made this my suggestion. Let's put it back on our agenda next month and make it and see if this board will resubmit it to the council. That may make the council get off the dead horse and make a decision. Mm -hmm. I think any any board member can ask for any item to be put on the agenda, yeah, Mr. Brown. Them. So, well, my my rebuttal to that would be, um, yes, I'm in agreement with that, but. We're to the point where we have all the votes we need except for the one. Why wouldn't we consider putting a cap on the cap just to get the well, nonprofits through to do something? Here is, here is one thing, Ms. Um, Ms. Smith, um, is that we could, we could recommend a policy today to put a cap, a dollar cap on nonprofits and send it up to the city council, and the city council could approve it. That doesn't mean, that means that you're, you will then have to submit another application That's under right. the new policy to come back. And so we're talking about, you know, probably several months delay further on that. Um, my thought is that, and I, I don't disagree with Mr. Brown's recommendation, is, uh, is, to, is to, to, to either resubmit it or just tell the council they need to make a decision on whether they're going to allow this policy or not. Now, um, but if we put it back in their lap, they certainly will have to deal with it. I mean, 
and if we if we approve the limit, what's to say the city council wouldn't change it or up it or lower it? What's to say so even if we approve? <laughs> yeah. Well, and if if we had a lower limit for nonprofits, if we uh, even did that, and you came back for a request, and even if we approved it again, the city council could still vote it down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and if I could just clarify, my understanding of the. The cap isn't a cap on individual projects, but a cap on the portion of available tiers funds that can go towards nonprofits. So, like, only 20% of the yearly funds can go to nonprofits or something like that. Uh, again, to address the perceived well, fear that a bunch of nonprofits would come in and, and take up all the money. Yeah, well, I, I think that if we, had, if we had that problem in the north, that we had so many people app applying for those funds, I, I would be more sensitive to that argument, but I'm not, I'm just not, uh, not at this point. So, well, thank you, ma'am. Multiple times that they're gonna do what they want to. I mean, as far as from what we approve, they turned down or what we have not approved and they've approved as far as the funding goes for, you know, for the parks. Well, the, uh, I, I still think that this needs to come from them because whatever yeah, we the, say, they're gonna do anything. The clear, the clear message is that this, that, Enough of the members of the city council do not want nonprofits to be able to apply. That um, that there's no reason for us to take any further action on it, adjusting the policy or trying to negotiate the policy. I just leave that up. If the city council wants to put a cap, a 20 percent on the amount of funds that can be used for nonprofits, I invite the city council to do that if that's what they think is is right. I disagree with it, but. I, if that's what they want, then do us, tell us what to do, and we'll do it. So I think we're done with that item, unless there's something else. Mr. Just Boone, you want to? Clarify, okay. Just to make sure I understand it, because I'll get asked. The board is saying they, they're fine with the policy as it is. If they want to change it, they can change that and send it back to you all. Yep. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. It, it. If the city council wants to change the policy, they can change the policy. And then we'll. You're fine with it as it is. You, yep, we're fine with it as it is. We're going to we're we're not going to take any action on and Rick, making. The city council needs to realize that only twenty percent of our money can go to the nonprofit anyway. They they, they keep saying nonprofit is going to eat all the money up. Well, we've got a million three sitting in the north fund, and then nonprofits ain't eating the damn nick of it. Mr. Boone, <laughs> Reverend Boone. Uh, I'm glad to address you one more time. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because of how much has been invested in this process <laughs> and the return has been non-existent. Um, there is a distinction, and we know it, between uh, the types of nonprofit organization and the truth is that the whole issue has to do with the church. That's the whole issue. No, I'm not. Well, it's part of it. There's another, one of the members of the council is yeah. looking at another entity yeah. that's not even related to you. Okay. And yeah. so what, what I'm suggesting is that if as a organization and a committee that you have supported it for the nonprofit organization, and we've gone through this process, this cycle, over and over again, I think it's a public issue. I believe that we need to make it known to the city, to the city I'm talking about, everyone, that, that, that this is not something that's acceptable. It's not acceptable because it's a form <laughs> of a word that I don't even want to use. No, I know what you're talking about. Okay? And I think we need to go to the media and make it known that there was everyone except for two people who voted for this to happen. One vote away from being inclusive rather than exclusive. And I'm challenging this committee to go public. And when I say go public, I'm talking about television, radio, let it be known that this is discrimination. Amen. This is discrimination. 
for nonprofits. And in my spirit, and I'm not preaching, I believe it's time out for settling. We don't have to settle. But I know and believe that if it's made known, there are people who are in this community, both in the spiritual realm and natural realm, who will come to the aid and respond that this ain't right. They have disrespected you. They have discounted. That's not new. Huh? That's not new. <laughs> no, but, but, but they have done that, and they've discounted you, and they've discounted everyone who's involved in this process. I'm not angry, but what I am is I'm saying, if you all don't speak out, and if you don't make it known what the real issues are, then you're going to be held accountable for it. And so I was sitting there for the last time. I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back in here, but I can go out there. Mm -hmm. Well, you may come back, but we're going to be back on the agenda next week, next month. <laughs> but but, but before, before the agenda, I think it needs to be made publicly known what has transpired for the last year and there has no resolve been given and you've been disrespected uh, and you voted to approve it. It was a majority approval for it and it still hasn't gotten off of first base. And I'm t I mean, it ought to be enough. And if we don't say something to the public, we're cheating the public because they don't know that they're discounting this, that they're disrespecting this. And a lot of them don't have any idea of what is really been asked for. It's not been asking for a handout. It's not asking for money. It's asking out for cleaning up a neighborhood, a strip, a strip that I call Martin Luther King Amen. Corridor. Now, if we have to get a plan to come up and design how we can make, we can make money. We can bring money in. We have giftings and creativity. And we're going to do more than talk. We're going to do something about it. Thank you, good, Reverend. Good afternoon. And so, Mr. Chairman. Yes. What are we going to do with Mr. Brown's well, recommendation? Just, first, we'll, we'll deal with that at the end of the meeting. Uh, first, to clarify, before we go to the director's report, Rick, just to clarify, um, we're not taking any action or any position. We're basically saying we're not going to make any recommendation as to what policy, what the policy ought to be. We're, you, you know. You want a motion, Rick? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a clear statement. We're not taking any action on any policy, at least for the foreseeable future, what the policy ought to be related to nonprofits. We think the city council should do that because we have no idea what they're, what they want to do. Um, okay, item number seven. Sorry for that delay. Director's report. Just a couple of things. Uh, one, just an announcement that the South application cycle begins November first. Uh, so we will start accepting those applications November 1st, and it will go through the end of the month, so November 30th. Uh, those will be due. Uh, we Staff typically takes a month of December to review those, and then we'll bring them to you at your January meeting. Okay. The um, only other thing, you uh, kind of I started I, the meeting I, with I, it, I but stole, this, I, I stole this will thunder. be my last uh, meeting with the Tears Board, but I appreciate uh, getting to work with you all, and I appreciate your service uh, to this Where board. Where are you going, Don? I'm going to go work for a consulting firm. Um, I'll be remote working from San Angelo, but it's a firm in San Antonio. Well, I, I think I can speak for the board at, and the community to say, you know, thank you for your years of service, not only to this board, but to the city. I think it's in a better place because you've been with the city, and I appreciate your forthrightness and your candor with me. 
uh, in dealing with issues related to the Tears Board. And I want to thank you very much for your service. Yes, ma'am. Certainly. Be again, uh, John. Uh, and congratulations and, and good wishes on your new journey. Thank you. All right. On the available for assignment of South, is that something we're going to find out today? Or did I miss the amount that's available for the South? Did I miss that in your report? Roughly 9,000. It was 9,000 total. 9, okay, but I thought that was just on interest. But that's what we're allocating. We're allocating that interest we're towards. every single penny available, uh, and so it, it ended the year at zero. Okay, um, that's, I just wanted to get that for the record. Next so month, you'll get a interest. brand new number we don't have yet, but this revenue estimate will be what the revenue is expected to be for the coming year. It should be fairly close to that 543,000. Uh, but yep. we should have that number. Now, remember, a portion of that, I, th I think in the South, 25% of that automatically goes to the Chadburn project, or maybe 50%. I, I get the two. It's 25% in one and 50% in the other. Um, so some of that will be lopped off the top, but then the remaining will be available for new projects. Okay, so again, just, just for the record, the amount that's available, I know this was as of September 30 on your, your update here. And, and yeah, so, so as of September 30th, October 1. there are zero dollars in the South. Okay, so as of today, which is past October 1, Correct. what is the amount? And that we, we don't know yet. And when will we know that? Th that should be available by your next meeting when they do the October 31st year-end report, okay. or the year month-end report for the month. Okay, thank you. Sure. It's going to be close to about 100000 available, I think. And... Based on last year. Just for next meeting, Mr. Brown has requested a reconsideration of the Gethsemane application for resubmission to council at the next meeting. Are there Mr. any other? Is yes, there anything else that Gethsemane can do, um, to your knowledge or anyone's knowledge, that could improve? I mean, just to resubmit the same uh, plan is one thing, but is there anything other than the comment that was made by the council person in I, last month? Is there anything else that they can do to enhance that? Uh, call that council, those, call, those call those council, council, council members. Yeah. Hang on a minute. The, uh, you know, here's, here's been one of my issues. This is just us talking. Uh -huh. um, is because the policy says nonprofits can apply. Nonprofits mm -hmm. were told they could apply and that they would be eligible for consideration, but you had to have a supermajority vote. So they all understood that. Uh, the criteria included several things, one of which was the project has to make a substantial economic impact. Mm -hmm. uh, we, as this board, decided that this project did, uh, but when it got to the city council, at least as far as the two uh, minority members who voted against it, it did not appear to me that, that we were having any discussion about whether it met the criteria. Sure. That it was about a policy issue of mm -hmm. whether or not nonprofits should be eligible. Mm -hmm. And so essentially my position on that is the city council needs to, I thought they had decided that issue by yeah. the policy that we have, but mm -hmm. apparently they haven't. Right. Uh, and. You know, if, if, if you want to deny their application because two council members decided, disagreed that it had a substantial economic impact, I have no problem with that decision. Reasonable people can disagree on that. What I have a problem with is that the city council puts criteria in place and then does not apply them equally to anyone that's applying. So, that's Well, I, I guess what I'm really trying to get to yep. is... Um, I, I don't answer your question. There, I don't know that there's anything that they can do other than lobby the city council. Okay. So, because I'm new, and those of you who've been around through this voting process, is there anything that you can think of that could enhance the proposal from Gethsemane? We're talking about putting it back on the agenda, but is there anything else that they could possibly include in your mind that would allow us to get it over the hump with those two council people other than talking to the council. I'm saying what content, what data well, could the, they well, actually the include only in their presentation? Go ahead. I think we discussed some of that last time because one of the questions I was asking them were about how many members do they have, mm -hmm. you know, because those are taxpayers, and what's their plan for growth, which, which you aren't here for that. Right. But I, I, saw would, that on I would hope that those numbers would be if they, if they resubmitted, I would hope that those numbers would be added. You know. Well, and I, 
anything that you can add to an application as a nonprofit that boosts the likely that shows clearly or shows clearly that the substantial economic impact that it would have on the community or on you know okay, so I don't think you're going to change the mayor no but, I don't think so either. But, but I think if you invited the councilman from Lakeview to get in your car and drive down Martin Luther King and see what you can do, what has been done and what you can do by enhancing that avenue and what it would bring to the community, then I think he is uh, potentially uh, a, a yes vote. Okay, so I saw from the meeting that I viewed on YouTube, I saw the renderings, but is there a possibility, does anyone on this board think that an enhanced rendering, perhaps, of what they're trying to do would help sway the vote? I don't think it has anything to do with the application. Yeah. No. Okay, it's just a personal opinion. That's it's, what you I don't know if it was a personal opinion, but it, a it's, personal, personal, it's, it's a policy. Standard. It's a policy. Uh, I think it is a philosophical Different. Policy yeah. decision. Dr. Reverend Myers, Reverend Myers you want to say uh, something? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of things that you can't uh, deal with because as long as two people decide that they don't want to honor the spirit of what the current policy is. But I think one of the things that Reverend Boone was saying is that quite apart what you can't do, and quite apart from the fact that it may fail if you try to do it. Uh, he, I think, avoided using a word that, I don't think it's a dirty word, but uh, another word is hypocrisy. And that means accountability uh, or lack of accountability to what you decide to do when you start implementing it. <clears throat> and as long as the city council voted to have the policy they have and then decide at that point to not go by the standards by which it operates, that is discrimination. It's, you don't have to call it race, you don't have to call it anything else. That is separating out people who have a particular view and holding them to a separate standard of accountability that you hold everybody else to. If they had said, we don't want <clears throat> uh, to have uh, not-for-profits considered and they voted on it, no problem at all. But having voted on it and having tried really almost certain that they were going to succeed to uh, rescind that at that one meeting and found that they couldn't rescind it and they still refused to treat people equitably, I think that that's kind of hypocrisy. And whether or not you change anybody's mind, it seems to me you hold them publicly accountable for not holding their opinions about not-for-profits, but not living up to the criteria by which city council people are supposed to make decisions. And they made a decision, and then they said, oops, I don't think I'd like to include those people in our decision. I think publicly, and I don't know how Reverend Boone wanted to go about it, but I think the idea of bringing it back up again and as was suggested, let them vote it down again until they're willing to make a decision about saying we are going to change it and then deal with that. But uh, I don't think they should get off with saying it's a done deal because I think it's embarrassing to them and the reason it's embarrassing, it's basically wrong, it's hypocritical, it's discriminatory. And when it's put in that way, instead of arguing about do they pay taxes or not, do they adhere to the criteria that the city council has said they have to do it. And I think by bringing it up to them again and again and again and making them come up with an answer they have to hold to, uh, we're letting them off the hook. Or change the policy. Yeah, That's change exactly the policy. what I'm saying. If they do that, it's a whole different that's, ball game. But they reason. tried. And they failed. I think they were very surprised that they failed, but they did. And that's, thank you. Thank you, Reverend Myers. John Marks, the council's got a bear by the horns, and they better get a hold of it. Is there, uh, is there any other items for future agenda items any board member wants to take up? And do you, I guess, have we had a report lately on 4th Street? 
Yeah, no, we, no. we have not. <laughs> we um, haven't. I haven't. I don't recall one in the last couple. No, weeks. there hasn't been. Okay, um, and we, we probably. And as I said last time, I would like to have some sort of whether we do it in a session or in a separate one, some sort of training for the new board members or and refresher for us about the processes and and how the applications get processed and the criteria, you know, that sort of thing, just so everybody can understand the, the procedure everyone goes by. Yes, ma'am, Mr. Shirley. Chairman, uh, are we able to get a list of all of the nonprofits that are uh, in the northern uh, tier zone and those versus those, not versus, but and those that are in the southern? I. Are we able to get that? I do not know. I don't it's believe correct. we have a catalog of, of that. Can you provide so, us a list of nonprofits that have received funding from us in the past? It's probably zero. I think it's. Uh, I was going to say, is there a single one? Huh? Is there a single one that has? I don't think there has been. I don't think so. Well, are we able to determine through tax records or otherwise uh, the nonprofits that are in either zone and the type of nonprofit that it is? Are we able to? Well, you could only do that, I think. I mean, other than driving up and down the street is through the property yeah. tax rolls if the nonprofit well, owns I, property. I think the short answer is that is not something that I, I don't believe we have the, the city, staff available city data. Okay. to research. Because it seems like if we know the type of business that it is in our tax and property rolls, we should be able to determine, and I'm having a senior moment, I can't think of the term, but there is a code, uh, a Chairman, that uh, your business has, depending on the type of business, if somebody can think You're of it. You're talking about the NCIS code? Thank you. I just couldn't think of it there. Just Didn't had a Christmas moment. old Fort Concho get so, a grant from us a long time ago? But Fort Concho is part no, of No, less Christmas at old Fort Concho. Not I mean, that I'm aware well, of. It, it, it also depends. If you count if you count the city as a nonprofit, the city has gotten lots of money right. from the yeah. tier zone. This, so. And the, the city has granted it. So the city council has imposed so, so what thousands I, of dollars okay, if of I could our finish, money okay. on streets and nonprofits. Shirley. If I could finish my thought, what I'd like to know, Director, is are we able to get that by NCIS code? Are we able, does the city track that by that? No. No. Uh, is there a state entity that could help us with that? Because what's bothering me is the number of um, church nonprofits on both sides. When I look at, because I know this was also an argument when some months back, maybe last year, when I was out walking in the heat trying to make sure people from the north came <laughs> uh, to be a part of this process, is we have a lot of churches on the south. And we also have a lot of churches on the north. So that's why I'm trying to distinguish what are the types of nonprofits, right, uh, that we have in either zone. Because it appears to me that other types of non religious, I'll say, nonprofits, that most of them are located on the south. And so when I even use as an example of one of our major companies here, and I won't say a name here because I don't know if that's in order, Mr. Chairman, uh, that is nonprofit that has such a huge footprint in San Angelo, in downtown San Angelo, and across the city, I don't know if they've ever gotten any money from no. this board. So I'm really trying to distinguish what types of businesses are we talking about that are nonprofit? There are a lot of churches on either side, but there is also a large commercial nonprofit entity in the city of San Angelo that has a large footprint on the south. And I'd really like to be able to distinguish what it is that we're talking about. We might be able to help Gethsemane with their proposal once it's brought back, Steve, uh, to this body to then present it to the city because we'll have the data. I, I have to have the data, and right now it seems to me we don't have the data to even help or to suggest ways that Gethsemane can even help themselves because we don't have the data. And, and I think the short answer is we don't have that. Uh, and how the, do we get that I think that the, the best we could do is a map showing non-taxable properties and taxable properties. That wouldn't distinguish between churches and other types of nonprofits. It would just be which properties are owned by an entity that doesn't pay taxes. That, okay. That's so about that, the best we start. can do. That's a start. Now, if you provided that information, would it be out of order, Mr. Chairman, 
uh, that that information is provided to this body? I just don't, Shirley, I understand what you're getting at, but, you know, to me that's kind of, that's kind of, you're not really getting, what we're saying is the city council needs to set the policy on what they want to do with it. Oh, I agree and, with that. I, and, I haven't changed my opinion and, on that. And um, so I don't know. To me, that's information that we would might want to have if we were going to have a discussion about what the policy should be. I guess what I'm saying is I just let the city council figure it out. Okay, and I agree with that in yeah. part, but I'm wondering if the information can be made available, Director John James, can that information be shared either with this body or with Gethsemane? You know, I guess what I'm saying is we're trying to advocate for the decision that this body made. And is there something else, if it's not out of order, Mr. Chairman, that this body can suggest that will help the applicant in their application? And if that is something that can be provided, and they can use it however they need to use it, but without that, it seems to me that it's a very imbalanced uh, view uh, if we don't have all of the data that they can even use to advocate for themselves. That's my point. Yeah, well, I think we the can discuss applicants, that applicants are always available to, to contact staff and get whatever information the city has available. Okay. Right. right. So, anything further? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved by Ms. Spears, second by Mr. Benson. Oh, you seconded, oh. Mr. Holmes. Well, we all got it. We got it thirded. All right. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we are adjourned. Can't wait for no